Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Saturday Live. I'm uh, getting back into the swing of these. I know that, like we've had a couple of weeks where I haven't done these, which is a bit weird, right? So I do apologize. But I'm back with another one, another banger. I'm recording this on the first day of World Autism Awareness Week 2021. I was going to say 2020 then. Um, and I'm here with, um, I'm joined by Faye, who is an autism advocate. She is also an author. And we have been talking on Instagram, and apparently she has quite an interesting story to tell. So um, yeah, Faye, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little about what you do? Yeah, hi, I'm Faye. I'm 30 years old and I'm from the Warrington area, which is in between Manchester and Liverpool up in the northwest. I am a mum, I'm an author, I'm a business owner, I'm a student nurse and I'm an autism advocate. Outside of nursing, like I say, I am a mum and I do run a beauty business, which I've had for a number of years now. Um, and outside of that, I do a lot of work regarding the autism spectrum. So I can't give too much away because I'm not allowed to say too much until it's out there. Um, but I do help in my local hospitals with helping them to become more autism friendly. I'm doing a bit on the children's ward. Um, I know a lot of things are getting put into place. I've had a few meetings there and I've been asked to do something else, which I'm not allowed to talk about just yet. Um, but again, on the whole, the, the hospital's trust have asked me to uh, get stuck in with them with the new project that they've got going on. Um, I've spoken universities, I've given talks and overall I just try and get stuck in with everything that I can. I'm now I've signed up to be a volunteer at my local National Autistic Society as well so that's that's going underway as well. So which one is your local one? Which which is your local National Autistic Society? At Warrington. Oh they got Warrington's Warrington. got their own brand. I did one, I did a talk, I did the Chester um, ball, uh, they did like a winter ball, I was talking at the Chester winter ball, so I thought it might have been a similar one because they're quite close to each other. Yeah, so. to be fair, I didn't know Warrington had their own branch until I started um, doing things like this, oh, I was quite sure <laughs> myself, which is another reason why I wanted to get stuck in um, and help out there, because I think if I didn't know about it, I don't know how many other people would know about it, and it's in our area, and I just think it's a shame that people don't know about it, because it's a big help. Yeah, yeah, huge, huge help. One second, my dog wants to get under his blanket. Hold on. <laughs> oh, man. Don't work with children and animals for live TV or something, isn't it? Yeah. So um, it sounds like you have your hands full, which is a great yes. thing because I always feel um, that busy people have the best to give because they are actively engaging their brains, right? And I feel like all autistic people are busy people. Um, so what would you say that your your main focus in life is? Like, what would you say, like, you know, the one thing that you kind of like, you know, your, the one thing that you feel you're, you're adding value to reality with, how, what would you say that is? Overall, in general, I really, what I hope to eventually gain is to just bring uh, an overall bigger awareness for people on the autism spectrum um, genuinely because I didn't get diagnosed until I was 27 so I went through most of my adult life um, you know just being an outsider but not quite knowing why and um, when I did get my diagnosis everything just made sense um, and the reason I ended up doing my own book on autism was because when I did get diagnosed I tried to find information regarding the subject um, to kind of educate myself really and I was at college at the time um, and I had to do a talk um, on, on any subject we wanted to do, anything that we, you know, were familiar with. So I thought, well, you know, Asperger's is a great, a great part to, to, to have a go at because I know about it, obviously, with having it myself. And so I started looking into it and I actually couldn't find any information out there that made, made sense. And I thought, if I don't understand it and I've got it, it, you know, it's not a lot of hope for people who maybe don't understand it quite as much or want to understand it if you've got family members on the spectrum and, everything that I did read was really scientifically long-winded and nothing really made sense. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, you know, that's where the idea of my book came from. Um, so I wrote that and eventually I just want to get it out there and, and have the world understand that people think that there's a certain stereotypes people are autistic and I want to break the stereotype overall. That is my main goal. I just want people to see that people who have, who have autism or are on the spectrum somewhere are just as normal as everybody else. We just, you know, we might just think a little bit differently or see things a little differently, but we're not any way, shape or form different as a whole. And I think, you know, a lot of people when they meet me and I tell them that I've got Asperger's, the, you know, the, the first thing is the shots and I think, and then, then they say, we don't look autistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, I, if, I had, yeah. if I had a pound for every time I heard that. Oh, yeah. So what is, um, like, um, what's been your experience then with, with autism and kind of, like, 
you know, because you're obviously wanting to raise more awareness that like, wh- what has your, been your, your, your experience in, in, in people's reaction to autism in general, like what their knowledge and stuff, like how do you, how do you feel the world currently understands autism? Personally, from when I've done my own research and when I've been speaking to people about it, a lot of people who don't know much about it, as in they don't have themselves or they don't have family members or they don't personally know anyone who's on the spectrum, have the same outlook as the genuine stereotype of we're stupid, um, we have a certain look, we won't get anywhere in life. Um, you know, they feel sorry for us almost and, and have sympathy for us and, and they set at the same kind of outlook as you know they just tend to feel a bit well just sorry for us really overall and it's it's a shame because those that I've spoken to that do have experience with people on the spectrum have a complete different outlook because they know it's it's not what that is what's out there and that's what I've come back to regarding the information not being so clear and being so stereotypical that it's just becoming a bit com- more complex than need to be because people aren't getting direct information it's like data I think personally from what from what 100%. i've read and, and myself definitely i mean like you know as being a female on the spectrum as well i feel like you know there's this whole idea that a lot of people believe that females don't you know aren't on the spectrum which is such a bizarre like it's an old it's an old theory that came from hans asperger from back yeah. in the 1940s when he because he only studied a little boys on the spectrum so um it was this yeah. whole kind of like myth that kind of carried on um you know how do you do you find it even harder because you are female i'm, I'm presuming that you identify as a female yes. <laughs> um and like you know i'm sorry i didn't mean to presume is it like what, what are your pronouns is it yeah, yeah. Her? Mm-hmm. Sorry, say that again. What pronouns do, pronouns do you use? Is it she, her? Oh, I, either. <laughs> I'm happy with either. I'll answer to anything. <laughs> okay sorry sometimes i just i just get i don't want to kind of offend anybody by saying like oh you know you're female you you may not identify as female you know gender is obviously a fluid thing um (laughs) so um you know being a a, you know a young female on the spectrum do you feel like there's extra added kind of issues that you're you're there's there's more pressure on you to kind of work harder because this whole like it's horrible i feel like um Yeah, yeah i feel like doing this um uh, do, doing this kind of like this work that you're doing, you know, like putting the book out, which we'll get to in a sec, and 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 having these conversations and, and do, putting stuff on your Instagram, which I, I I've been following now for for a while, um, and it's quite good because you're you're being kind of open and raw. And one of the things I like to do with my channel is, is kind of just be open and and just have um, the ability to just share you know you know no uncensored, just share it as it is, and and hope that people can can relate, you know. So I think what you're doing it is yeah. super important and super valuable. And I encourage it with everything. This is why I wanted you on the show. Um, so the book, do you want to talk? I, I downloaded the book on Kindle. And before you get, I'm going to ask you to explain a little bit about the book and tell everybody about what it is and where they get it. But I, I downloaded it and I was reading it on my iPhone. And the first thing that strikes me about the book is that it's very much a, it's almost like I'm reading a, a text message conversation that you and I would be having. Like that's how the flow of it seems, right? I mean, was that yeah. intentional? Was that how you tried to do it? Like, yeah. So as I was saying before, research, um, everything was quite long-winded and I just thought more people I spoke to about the people would say to me, I've learned about the spectrum, but one, you know, everything's too difficult to understand on the internet. There's not enough stuff out there for me to to do my, my research with it. People were saying things, you know, some people struggle with reading, some people struggle to read for a long period of time and prefer something short and quick. Um, so a, a lot of people that I did speak to said, I love to learn about people on the spectrum because of X, Y, and Z. You know, they might have family members who are on it and they just want to understand them a bit more. But they generally struggle as a whole to with reading in general. Um, and it got me thinking about, you know, a style book that I could write that would kind of give people the image um, to kind of understand the spectrum disorder a little bit more but in an easy to read manner so what I did I actually spent a year carrying a little notebook around with me and a pen and anytime I got into a situation I thought this is the kind of thing people want to know about I'll write it down and I did that throughout the course of a year and eventually sat down and undenied about putting it together but I did eventually so yeah the, the book's pretty much a collection of thoughts and experiences that I've gone through um, over the course of a year 
a few bits of vintage in there from about when I was younger as well. But on the whole, it's been everything that I did over that course of the year. And then they just put it into a simple, easy to read format. So it's easy for everyone. I've had people's children read it um, who are going through trouble high school and the parents are thankful for writing it in that way because they said they haven't got any concentration span because it's easy to read. They took it in and with it not being so long-winded and complex, they've understood it, the concept of it a bit more. And my parents say to me that they understand their child a lot more from reading that than they have going to any meeting with, with specialists, um, which is really nice to hear. Yeah, that's that's really, really good. Um, and, and I felt like that as well. And I just want to apologize as well, because there's some kind of like delay and, and some interference in your video. So it is breaking up. So anybody listening on the podcast and watching on YouTube, I do apologize, but we're getting there. But this is valuable information. So there's nothing we can do. So just persevere with us. Sorry. Um, and I feel like the... Um, yeah, having something that, that has a flow of digestion uh, through through information content like like your book in that manner is super interesting and it's quite um, quite um, innovative as well. I, I really liked it. So kudos on that. So um, the so tell what's the title of the book and where can people actually get it? Yeah, it's called Not We're Just Limited Edition Inside the Autistic Mind, and it's on Amazon. You can get it on Kindle or paperback. Cool. I will leave a link for the book in the description below and in the show notes of the video um, for anybody who's listening on the podcast. Um, I got the Kindle version. Super, super awesome. Um, And it's a really, really interesting book. So um, yeah, definitely highly recommend checking it out. And the idea of you know, Faye's taking like her experiences from a year to put together um, and um, give it to you in in a, in a concise format. And that is life, you know? So if you ever want like a window in somebody's life on, on the autism inspection, it's a great idea. I love it. So yeah, definitely check it out. And we need more books like this. So get right in your second one, Faye. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what is your next move? Like what, what is your like next big thing? So I know you're running like Instagram and I'll leave a link for your social media channels down below as well. So you can text me those later. Um, and everybody can go and follow you if they want to, you know, learn more about your day to day. What is your kind of like, what's your next goal? What's your next thing? What are you going to do? So my next goal uh, in general is just, you know, I'm, like I say, I'm a student nurse, so I am doing that at the moment. That's the, my main big goal at the moment because um, it's quite time consuming. <laughs> it takes a big chunk of life up, um, but I have got two and a bit years left to go with that. Um, but I do want to kind of move forward with the autism um, work I'm doing purely because I've been such a technophobe and social media phobe my entire life. But I do know and have accepted that that is the way things are going um, and having to get a grip on that. So eventually, I'm not sure if it's a definite or not, but I would like to eventually have my own YouTube channel at some point in the future, just to kind of show what it's like day to day living with autism. And again, to show that it's not the idea that everyone's got again probably a bit like my book but a live version I suppose and um, where it's not going to be critical and you can see that I do go to work I do have a nursing career I am mom, I can run a normal life yes I have meltdowns yes I have days where I shut off yes I go mute sometimes yes I struggle but yes I can conform in a normal society and just get through the day I can, I can go to work I can have a normal life and I just want people to see that side of it most people encouragement who are on the spectrum who may have been diagnosed younger and maybe get the feeling that they might not get anywhere in life or because they've got a label that people won't accept them into society and I just want to show that that's not always there. I do get some people, you know, they do struggle a lot more than others. And I am quite lucky. I feel it's a bit of a double edged sword that I was diagnosed late because I think back when I was younger, um People who are on the autism spectrum when I was in school were treated differently. As awful it is to say that they really were. Um, it's just truth and it's, it's real. And that was as much as it was. It, it would have been good to have the support in place in school earlier because I struggled a lot in school. Yeah, I do feel that having it later in life made me a bit tougher, and it did make me. It pushed me a little bit more because, I, like I said before, I, I didn't know I was different younger when I was younger. Didn't know why. I went through, you know, been through hell and back through life. Um, you grow, right? You learn. What, absolutely, that's it. And when I got my diagnosis, everything made sense. So I just kind of think that having that late diagnosis gave me the chance to build myself up in my younger years, strength of my own, um, trying to 
I work out who I was and why I did feel so different to society. Then when I got my diagnosis, everything made so much more sense. I was able to then use that as a strength. And I think personally, without having Asperger's, I don't think I'd have written my book. Um, not because of the subject, I just mean I think it gave me a natural spirit to want to do better, to show people that you can achieve. Just because you're on the autism spectrum, you can achieve things in life. Definitely, dude. And it's so powerful. What you just said then was super powerful and encouraging. And any, you know, young uh, woman or, or young girl watching this now um, or hearing your voice uh, as crackly as it may be through this bad internet connection, um, it's mm -hmm. too, still super powerful and super inspiring. And I think that the work you're doing is is inspirational and it is much needed. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so we're going to wrap it up because uh, Zoom only allows me a certain amount of time to actually record these things. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you'd like to say before we kind of wrap this up? It's been super Super interesting. I'd just like to say thank you for having me on here and giving the opportunity because like I say there's not much out there for people to see the normal side of autism and, and the unstereotyped side of it so it's nice to you know like being a female is autistic as well I don't think there's many people with, who have got much of a voice out there to do this what I want to do and um, so I do appreciate you having me on thank you. Oh it's my absolute pleasure thank you I mean you know uh, it, it's really nice. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. If you want to check out anything to do with Faye and the book and her social media channels, which I think is just Instagram at the moment, maybe Facebook as well, I will leave a link in the show notes and in the description of this video. And if you're watching over on Instagram, then you can just click her at name in the description of this video and then you'll go through to her Instagram channel. All right, guys. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.